Ever. Okay. So the YouTube video should start about right here. Um, so what we're doing is we're starting off the Classy Approach series of how to apply the Classy Approach at every single level. Um, and I'm not going to do it every single rank. I'm going to do it like every single chunk of rank. So we're starting out at 25Q to 23Q. The idea being we just learned the rules of the game. Okay. We just learned the rules of the game and we want to start learning some strategies. So what do we do? So my recommendation is to start out on a nine by nine board. And then I'm going to start with Chinese rules. The reason I start with Chinese rules is because the way the Chinese rules are counted is more beginner friendly while you're learning some new shapes. And it doesn't really punish you for trying things in your opponent's area or trying things in your area, right? So it's not going to punish you for placing stones on the board. We'll talk more about that when we change rule sets. But for now, the settings that I'm using, starting out with the classy approach, is going to be 9 by 9 ranked Chinese rules. It'll be live game speed because I want these to be live. I'm going to use Bio Yummy, 5 minutes main time, and 30 seconds times 5 periods. 5 minutes should be plenty for a 9 by 9 we don't want to overthink. We just want to do our basics. The handicap will be none because I want to do even games so I can learn some shapes. Uh, Comey automatic, my color automatic. I want to disable analysis because I don't want my opponents trying to, you know, to play out the moves before, <laughs> before playing. Uh, so I'm going to disable analysis. I am going to restrict the rank. Uh, I'm going to restrict it to 22Q. And 20Q, because it won't let me do 25Q. I don't know why. I'm trying to get a rank. And uh, maybe I'll try to resign this first one. But we're going to just introduce us to the class approach at this level. So I'm a question mark. Um, for some reason, it won't let me start at 25. But we're going to try to get uh, get to 25. I did let people know in chat um, that I'm playing uh, on this to look for my uh, C approach account. And so hopefully we'll get a 25Q to 20Q who will help us get a get a rank here. Uh, so the rules that we're going to be following, I'm going to give myself some rules. And the rules are going to be what basic shapes I want you guys to use at this level. I'm going to try to use those same shapes and win the game. Okay, that's what I'm going to try to do. I might try to resign before I win, but uh, the idea is I want to limit myself to some basic shapes. The basic shapes is going to be third and fourth line in the opening, which I'll show in the review. I'll go over this more in the review. But third and fourth line of the opening, open corners, open sides, and then we're going to push the borders. Okay. And then the attack and defense is going to be first and second, or like second line cutting points, and just making sure we don't miss a block. So we, they don't push into ours and cut us apart. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, if someone in chat could... Is there a 20, Q, 20 Qs in chat that can uh, accept my challenge? All right, I'll probably uh, I'll probably have to cut this part. Or maybe I will. Maybe I, will. I actually lost my video editor. Uh, I, I don't have my uh, my editing tools anymore. So I don't know if I can cut this. I might just have to cut this in Twitch. Um, but I don't know if I can cut it in the middle. All right, so now we just wait on a game. Just wait on a game. I am looking for uh, 20Q to pop up. I wish I could play a bot, but I couldn't figure out how to play a bot. I couldn't figure out how to get a rank with a bot. Man, this is going to take me like an hour, isn't it? I really hope not. I really hope... I'm going to have to cut this somehow. I'm going to have to cut this somehow. This is too long <laughs> waiting on a game. I really wanted to just start with a bot. That might work. That might work. I have to figure out how to use that. But I really just wanted to start with the bot. I don't know why I couldn't do it. This is a new account. This is a new account. I specifically did that so I could start at the 25 key rank. Oh my gosh. How do I set my rank? I'm not getting a challenge at all. Okay, computer. 19Q, let's try 19Q. Game started. Awesome. 
resign. Black wins. All right, do I have a rank now? Still question mark. All right, let's just start with a 19Q. We're going to start with a new bot. Game started. started. All right, so we finally got... We finally figured out how to get one of the bots to accept us. Um, so it took a little longer than I wanted to, but we're in the game. So we're going to start with our third and fourth line, open corners first. Okay? So open corners. So here's a corner with no stone in it. Uh, we have third line from the nearest edges, which we'll explain more in the review. Uh, this is the 3-3 three, three point, 4-4 four, four point, 3-4, three, four, and 3-4. Three, four. So we can start at any of these points. And we usually want to start across from our opponent. Uh, this will prevent, um, for example, the cross Fuseki, which means if I play here and he plays here and then I play here, you see how we're cutting uh, the board in half? We usually want to don't want to do that at the start while we're learning. So I'm going to start across from my opponent. So I'm just going to start with a 3-3 three, three point. Uh, then our opponent plays, and I'm going to do open corners first. So I'm going to go for another 3-3 three, three point. And now you see how I'm on the same side, so I'm kind of making a good relationship. Okay, so when they touch like this, defense first. They took a liberty, so I'm going to respond. The response to a touch is either a hane, which means to bend around, like this or like this, to bend around our opponent, or a nobi, which means to move forward, like this or like this or like this. But this one, you usually want to go up or down against the stone. Uh, so to move forward and gain two, excuse me, to move forward and gain two liberties. So I can either Hane or Nobi. Both are fine. So for now, I'm just going to start with a Nobi. I'm just going to expand along the side. So this is a side. I usually don't want to expand towards the edge because then I can might get trapped in the corner, right? So I'm going to expand along the side. So this I'm going to just choose this Nobi. This is simple and easy shape. Okay. So notice how I'm not walking to an edge. I'm walking to the open area. So he's trying to play me uh, play on me again. So i just going to Nobi one more time. And usually a good number to get to is four. Okay, so he's not taking a liberty. So now he's not taking a liberty or trying to block me. So now I'm good on this group. Okay, so now I'm going back to, okay, I'm not getting attacked. So now I have my uh, questions again. Um, so can I do open corners? Okay, so the questions that I'm talking about is, do I have weakness? Does my opponent have weakness? Where's the big move? So the only thing I'm thinking about is defense and then big move. Defense and then big move. If my opponent happens to give me weakness, cool. I might jump on it. But if I don't see it or I don't notice it, I don't care. My priorities are defense, big move. Okay, are there any open corners? This one's an open corner because he hasn't played one of these four points. So if he hasn't played one of these four points, I'm going to consider this an open corner. So open corners, then open sides. So I don't want to play this one because I don't want to touch. That's three liberties. So I'm just going to play a three, three point again. I could have also played like this one and be fine. Okay, so he touches again. Um, so I'm going to try to Nobi once. I hit my own head, so this is not quite a Nobi because this uh, takes a liberty. So now I'm, now I'm questioning like, oh, what do I do? I'm getting surrounded. I'm losing liberties. What do I do? Okay, so I can't expand along this side anymore. I can't go that way. So I guess let's just go this way. Just go this way. Okay. Uh, now he's blocked me. Um, I don't have four in a row, so I'm not quite comfortable. So let's let's play a Hane here. And we're going to learn about the second line cut. But we're mostly just trying to, you know, surround some edge and watch our second line cut. And so now we have four. So one, two, three, four. Yeah, it goes down one, but... Not perfect. It can't be perfect. Um, so now I have four. So I want to say we're maybe okay. Well, I haven't learned my life and death shapes just yet. We'll talk more about that maybe in the review. But for now, let's say, oh, maybe I think I'm okay. Maybe I'm fine. So let's go play somewhere else. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I am. If not, I will learn a new shape. It's better to learn a new shape than to question yourself. Trust yourself. Okay. So did he take a liberty? No. Okay. So do I have any weakness? This one... Is kind of a weakness, but let's talk about why. Okay, we want to talk about why. We always want to understand that why. So, can I play open corners? No, all the open corners are taken. Open sides? Not really. Okay, and this stone is kind of by its lonesome. It has no stones touching it, and black is both here and here. So maybe I'll consider this one something. Okay, so let's just let's just noby again, and expand some shape. the The other shape that I want to use at this level is one point jumps. But if I one point jump right here, I would have been touching a stone. And if I can avoid touching, I'm going to avoid touching. 
Okay, so in this case, I can't really avoid touching. Uh, so I can either hit my head or I can turn this way. So I'm just going to turn this way. I'm just going to keep expanding with nobies and one point jumps. Oh, he trying to come in. He's trying to come in. Panic. No, don't panic. Just block. He's trying to come into your to your area of control. Block. Stop him. Just block. Okay, so now um, I can hit my own head uh, or I can go to the second line. Both are expanding. That's fine. So at this point, I would consider us kind of like near the end. The reason is there's no open sides. We're kind of touching everywhere. So now it's about sealing the borders. Okay, so now we'll start bringing it down to the second line and first line. And we'll talk more about this in the review. So I'm just going to start pushing his border and expand my border. Okay. Push his border and expand my border. And this is a, another Hane, which means to bend around. I'm an Atari. We don't want to miss Ataris. So I'm going to connect. Okay, he fixes his cutting point. We'll talk about this in the review as well. Um, expand my border. And this one may uh, block my other border. Just finishing it. Oh, second line cutting point. This is a very important shape for us to remember. We'll also talk about this in the review. So I'm going to connect. I'm going to block... And I'm going to block. Oh, he's going in. Oh, no. What do I do? Simple steps. Are you going to get cut? No. Then just take his liberty and push him to the edge. Push him to the edge. Don't push him outwards. Don't let him escape. Oh, question. Am I going to be cut? Yes. Fix. Okay. And then push him to the edge. If he ignores, who cares? Push him to the edge. At this level, this is why we play Chinese rules, by the way. We can capture. Okay, just capture. Push him to the edge. Keep him trapped against the edge. Oh, he's going in again. Take a liberty. Push him to the edge. Push him to the edge. And if we die, who cares? All right, we're learning. Okay. Uh, we're going to try to capture. I don't know if this bot knows life and death. Oh, the bot knows life and death. So this is this is not 20Q bot, unfortunately. So our 20Q basics won't work against a... This is an 18Q. So unfortunately, 20Q basics aren't going to work. But oh well. We'll talk about more about this, how it works later. Um, But I don't care. Who cares if we lose? We are learning strategy. 10, 9, 8, 7, okay. 6. Expand the border. Oh, I'm in Atari. Connect. He's probably going to kill me again, isn't he? <laughs> this is not the ideal opponent, but who cares? All right. We're going to try to capture. Can we capture? Capture! Awesome! Oh, he kills us. Oh, well, who cares? We're learning. We're not trying to win. We're learning. So, capture. Atari. Who cares? Capture his stones over here. Capture. Capture. Don't care. They keep playing inside, just keep capturing them. Alright, now all the borders are blocked. We'll talk about why these are dead, and we'll introduce you to life and death, uh, since we apparently have to. So all the borders are blocked, so now I'm going to just pass. There's no more borders that I can push. I could... Okay, I can capture this stone. Okay. I don't care. Capture this stone. Oh no, I died! Try to capture this stone. Oh no, I died! Oh well! There's Borders are done. Pass. Pass. Remove the dead stones. Alright. So I lost my game! Oh no! I'm gonna go cry in my closet now! No. It's a learning experience. The way you learn at Go is by losing. And you get, you get beat up. And you're like, okay, now... Let's review and figure out why did we lose? What tactic? What tactics did we review do wrong? Started. And then we can apply those in our next game, and then maybe we'll win next time. But starting out, we're not just going to magically be better than someone who's been playing before because we haven't learned anything yet. So it's okay to lose starting out. It's okay to lose starting out. So let's review. The starting points... are these points. 
Why are these our starting points? Well, let's put an example on the board. Okay, this is our example. Four stones surrounds one, two, three, four points. Okay. Here it's six stones surrounding one, two, three, four points. Okay. And here it's eight. One, two, three, four points. Wait a second. Wait a second. All of them are the same amount of territory. But the amount of stones to make that territory is different. What caused that difference? the edge of the board. So it's more efficient to work with the edge of the board when you're trying to make territory. So utilizing the edge is a really good way to make territory. So now we know that the corner section is really nice because it has two edges that we can work with to make points. So now we know the section of the board. Now we need to learn what line to be on. Okay, so let's just start with placing it right here. How many points are we surrounding? Zero, none, nada. We're not surrounding anything on the edge. And also, we have one, two, three liberties. If we have liberties or these lifelines, anywhere on any other line, we have four. But on the first line, we have three. So we call this the deadline because it's very easy to die. It has zero points bad liberties it's our bad line so we don't want to start there we might finish there but we don't want to start there so let's try the second line ah the second line it's surrounding a point more or less right but it's only like one point so it's a little bit slow so this is called our losing line right second line is more for specialty like stealing or trying to go under our opponent or pushing their border or whatever second line is kind of our special line but not our starting line Third line, that's our magic line. Third line surrounds two points at a time. It's very safe. It's very solid. And we'll talk about why as we get stronger. Like third line is really good for making eyes, which if you don't know what eyes are, that's okay. We'll learn it later. But just know that third line is your line of safety and territory. So third line is really good for making territory efficiently. And it's also very safe. Fourth line is our line of development this is our line for making it bigger. It creates influence. It brings our position up. So fourth line is our line of development and line of influence. So this is also a good line. Fifth line is kind of like the bird in the sky. It's a little bit high. It doesn't really surround anything because your opponent can go on the third line, the line of safety, because it's safe, I can survive very easily and just steal all of your points. So fifth line is a little bit too high for making points. So it's not where we want to start. So we want to work with the two with the corner sides because we saw the example that working with the edges is very efficient. So one, two, three, one, two, three. So this is our three, three point. So this is the third line from both edges. This is our four, four point. Three, four, and three, four. So third and fourth line, open corners first. And so now we know our starting points. So that is why when he played here, I did the same thing. But oh, this isn't one of those four points. It's the same thing. This is the edges. One, two, three. One, two, three. It's the same thing. It's a three, three point from the low, uh, from the closest edges. Okay. Now, I mentioned that I wanted to start across from my opponent. So if he played here, I would play here. If he played here, I would play here. Why did I mention that? Because if we play it like this one, and he plays the open corner and I play the open corner, you notice how we're not really working together with our stones? But if I play here and he plays the open corner, I play the open corner. Let's say he plays an open edge. Now my stones are working together. And this is very nice. And this is kind of the ideal opening position if you can get it. You won't be able to get it every time, but this is kind of what you're aiming for. Third line goes up to the fourth line to build and fourth line goes down to the third line to settle. This is the relationship you're, you you kind of want these to have. So if you have support, fourth line is very nice. But if you don't have support and your opponent's near you, third line is good for safety. So this is kind of the relationship you want for making territory. And we tried to do that, but unfortunately our opponent stopped us pretty, pretty immediately. He just, bam, attached right in our face. 
So, when they do this, we don't really care about trying to attack our opponent yet. Right now, we're learning the basics of defense and big move. So, defense is priority over big move. So, I'm not going to go just play another open corner. Because maybe I lose my liberties and maybe I get captured and die. Dying is worse than a big move. Or dying has more value than a big move. So, defense first and then big move. A good strong shape is probably four in a row like this. If your opponent's touching you and you have four in a row, you're probably okay and you can go play a big move. You don't want to overcommit, so four in a row is kind of what you want to aim for. Let's talk about why. Okay. So here I said, if I go this way, I'm walking to the edge. You know what's not good? Getting trapped against the edge. Because look how much space I'm surrounding. It's very little space. And when we learn life and death, we'll understand that this is actually very dangerous. The more space you have surrounded, the safer you are. Okay? So I want to expand along the open edge. I don't want to walk to an edge. I want to expand and surround the edge. So when we play this way, notice I'm actually surrounding more and more of this side. So I'm expanding and surrounding more edge. And when he blocks me, then I can just go down like this or like this. Okay? So nobies are kind of our first shape that we want to learn. And we want to expand with the nobi. We don't want to walk to an edge. We don't want to walk to an edge. We want to expand along the edge and surround as much as we can. That is our safety. Okay? This is our this is one of our first shapes is the nobi. That's our first, like, attack and defense shape. Another one is if they play here. And I'm like, oh, I want to save it. We can play a one space jump. This jumps over one space. It still expands along the edge, but this is a much faster shape. We'll learn more about this as we play it and try it out, and our opponent tries to cut or whatever. We'll learn more about how this works. But I, right now, I just want you to remember that your shapes are, for defense right now, is no be along the edge or one space jump along the edge. It's very nice. And we would stay on the third line from the closest edge for safety because third line is safe. Okay? The reason I chose a no be over a one point jump here is because I'm losing a liberty. Okay? So when you're losing a liberty, just no be. If you're not losing a liberty and they're trying to surround you, you can maybe one point jump. We can work more on this as we play more games. But just kind of know these are a starting rule rule of thumbs. So he played, I no bead, and I no bead, and I'm trying to get four in a row. So I ignore it. So I could push one more and then ignore. That's also fine. If you want four in a row and you want to be safer, that's fine. But because he wasn't putting pressure on me right now, he wasn't uh he wasn't taking my liberties, he wasn't blocking my expansion, he played something that looked completely irrelevant to what I was trying to do. I was trying to expand and surround space. And I was trying to gain liberties. This does not take liberties, nor does it try to go into my space that I'm trying to surround. So it feels irrelevant to my group. So I said, okay, you want to play something irrelevant? Then I'm going to also go somewhere else. And Tanuki. Tanuki means to play away from the local situation. So if you Tanuki, I'll Tanuki. Unless I really feel that I need defense. And if you, if you feel that, that's fine. Def defense first. Trust yourself. Defense first, and then play a big move. Open corners, and then expand along the side, like here or here. Open corners, open sides, and make a position, if you can. If your opponent prevents it, fine. But that's what we're aiming for, okay? So now our opponent does it again, okay? I'm going to expand along the side, and notice how he I bumped my own head because he already has a stone right here. So I can't really expand any further. So now I'll start going to surround the space in the corner. I could try to expand right here with a Hane. And we can talk a little bit more about the, how this work, uh, works, I guess. So I could Nobi down to try and go under and Nobi um, and then try to surround the space. But I want to make it as big as possible. As big as possible. So I could also choose a Hane. A Hane means to bend around this stone right here. But what if he goes here? Oh no, I'm disconnected. This is called a cut because you are not connected diagonally. So these two stones are disconnected. So the best way to handle it 
is to, if you can, capture this cutting stone. The way you capture it is take a liberty, push it to the closest edge. Okay, so he's an Atari. So the way we know that we're okay is because I have two liberties, black has two liberties, and it's my turn. So when it's the same amount of liberties and I play first, I'm going to win this capturing race. So I take the liberty, push him to the edge. And I take the liberty and trap him against the edge. Now he tries to run against the edge. And I just capture. And he's dead. If I happen to go here, like sometimes you'll have shapes where they run across the edge. That's okay. Just keep him trapping against the edge. They'll run to another edge. But I can just capture. If he tries to attack me back, I can now capture the stone. And now you can see I'm no longer cut apart because the stone that was disconnecting me is now gone. So now I have a potential connection spot. And this is actually considered an eye, which we can talk about uh, more in the future. Okay, so this is why Hane is good because this one, my line, my edge of my points is right here. But this one, I moved it one line more. So I'm expanding it just a little bit bigger. So now let's say he blocks. This is our very first big important shape that we need to remember. This cutting point right here. This is one of the most important shapes to remember on the 9x9, to learn on the 9x9. These second line cuts. So remember, here it didn't work because two liberties, the two liberties. But here, if I ignore... Now it's one liberty to two liberties. Now I'm going to lose the capturing race. So if I try to block and play that same sequence, I get captured. So if they block, now the cutting point will work because now I don't have those liberties. So now I need to fix my cutting point and just connect. So the Hane is okay because a direct cut doesn't work. They have to block first and then you can fix and connect and gain liberties. So you can Hane when you have two liberties on, or these liberties on the outside, and then you just come back and connect when they block. And now you can see I expanded my eye space. Here, here, I expanded this space. I expanded my living space. It's just a little bit bigger. So I could do that. And then I could also do it here. Dude, 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 dude. Dude. And now you see, this is actually much more space than I played in the game. Dude, 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 dude. This is what I. This is the shape that I had in the game, and it died, right? So it means, oh, I should have played these Hanes to live. The reason I didn't is because sometimes this Hane is not good if you have a stone on the outside, because maybe when I play this Hane. These stones are attacking another stone because while I'm trying to live, see how this stone is just getting more and more and more and more surrounded. That's why I didn't do it in the game. So you have to be very cautious of that. But for now, you just learned another shape. We know Nobis, one point jumps, and now we know Ahane. And let's talk about one more shape for this. For the, for this, well, I wanted to talk about eyes, but we're running a little bit low on time, so we're just gonna. Wrap it up with one more shape. And that is the tiger's mouth. The tiger's mouth shape. So here, there was a cutting point or a disconnection point. So black fixed. Because if black didn't, then I can cut. And you see this stone is trapped against the edge. You really don't want to get cut near the edge. Getting cut when your opponent has a lot of stones around you will trap you against the edge. Okay, so you need to be cautious of that. So he fixed this cutting point. Defense. Defense first. Fix this category. Okay. But there's another way to fix. If you don't want to directly connect, sometimes you can indirectly connect like this. But oh, what if I place a stone inside and disconnect you? Ah. But you have one liberty when you do that because of four. So you just immediately get captured. So it's called a tiger's mouth because if you stick your hand inside of a tiger's mouth, it gets cut off. It gets eaten. So that is why... The tiger's mouth is another way 
to connect a cutting point. We are still connecting the cutting point. We are still fixing it. We're just fixing it with the tiger's mouth instead of direct connection. So this is uh, the other shape I wanted to, to leave you guys with. Nobi, one point jump, Hane, tiger's mouth. These are, these are some starting shapes. The other stuff, open corners, open sides, third line, fourth line. If our opponent takes our liberties, defense before big move. So our big moves, open corners, open sides. And then we can push the borders. We didn't get that to, on this game, but open corners, open sides, push the borders. Attack and defense, or just defense if we wanted to start with that. Defense. If we lose liberties, respond. Unless we have like four in a row and we have a lot of space. Our defensive shapes are nobies, one point jumps, and hanes. The other defense is protect your cutting points. You can do those with just direct connections or tiger's melts. And those are some starting shapes for middle game and opening. Attack and defense and opening patterns. The priorities, or the classy approach, is the, I, the order is my weakness, in other words, cutting points, liberties, space, my opponent's weakness, which we don't have to, we can kind of skip that step while we're learning defense, but if our opponent leaves weakness, then we want to learn how to punish it. So my weakness, opponent's weakness, and then big move. That is a classy approach. My weakness, opponent's weakness, big move. Again, my weakness, liberties, cutting points, space. Okay, and then big move, open corners, open sides, push the borders. And we're going to try to learn more about this with more examples and more examples. And this is what we're learning how to do at 25Q to 23Q. Now, we did die in this game, and we're going to learn that. But that's not the first thing I wanted to teach you guys. Uh, unfortunately, we got a 17Q bot, 18Q bot. Uh, I wanted to start with a 25Q bot. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work out. But we will learn this. It's okay if you die. That's not the priority just yet. We'll learn that soon. But for now, we want to start learning some shapes. Um, and we'll start learning how to defend ourselves. And then we'll learn why did these die. And that's life and death. And we'll learn that after we get these starting shapes down. And so that will conclude the first Classy Approach series video. Um, I will be explain expanding on this, and we'll get more and more information. So uh, take it step by step, one step at a time. Um, and we'll learn these one shape at a time, one tactic at a time, one idea at a time. So this one, I guess, was four or five ideas. So if you need to rewatch this video as many times as you need, but we're just going to start with some simple shapes and then we're going to add to it, add to it, add to it, and eventually get to the 19 by 19 and then just get more and more and more stuff added on. But the classy approach at its core is where am I weak? Where's my opponent weak? Where's the big move? And we're just going to expand on how we answer those questions as we go. And so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully you guys found this video educational and hopefully this will help you start understanding how you play, uh, how you play strategy and go. All right, and that will conclude my YouTube videos.